afternoon, Your Honors. Good afternoon, everyone in the courtroom. This is case number IT 95-13-1A, the prosecutor versus Mili Merksic and Veselin Slavanchanin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Merksic, uh, Mr. Slavanchanin, can you hear me? Your Honor, we can hear you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I can hear. Uh, appearances for the parties. Uh, first, for the defense, for Mr. Merksic. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon to everyone in the courtroom. Mr. Miroslav Asic, defense counsel, and uh, Vladimir Domaset will be the defense for Mr. Merksic today. Good afternoon, Your Honors. I am Novak Lukic, defense counsel from Belgrade, and together with Mr. Stefan Bourgon, I will represent the defense for Mr. Schlivantrian, and we have Mr. William St. Michael as our assistant here. Paul Rogers for the Office of the Prosecutor, together with uh, Mr. Marwan Dalal, and our case manager today is Ms. Alma Imamovic. Thank you. As the red As the registrar announced, the case on our agenda today is prosecutor against Mila Merksic and Veselin Slivanchanin. In accordance with the scheduling order issued on 9 April 2009, today the appeals chamber will deliver its judgment. The events giving rise to this case took place on 2021 November 1991 and concerned the mistreatment and execution of Croat and other non-Serb persons taken from the Vukovar Hospital by Serb forces on 20 November 1991. The city of Vukovar had been the object of attack by the Yugoslav People's Army here and after JNA from August until November 1991. During the course of the three-month siege, the city was largely destroyed by JNA shelling and hundreds of people were killed. When the Serb forces occupied the city, hundreds more non-Serbs were killed by Serb forces. The majority of the remaining non-Serb population of the city was expelled within days of the fall of Vukovar. In the last days of the siege, several hundred people sought refuge at the Bukovar Hospital in the hope that it would be evacuated in the presence of international observers. The Zagreb Agreement, concluded on 18 November 1991, provided for such an evacuation. However, on the morning of 20 November 1991, JNA soldiers conducted the triage at the Vukovar Hospital and loaded selected individuals onto buses. At minimum, the vast majority of the selected individuals were prisoners of war. The prisoners were transported first to the JN JNA barracks in Vukovar and then onward to a pig farm at Ovchara. At Ovchara, the prisoners were unloaded from the buses and held in a hangar. As they were unloaded from the buses, almost all of the prisoners were forced to pass through a gauntlet of Serb soldiers, who beat them cruelly with a variety of implements, including wooden sticks, rifle butts, poles, chains, and crutches, and verbally abused them. The beatings continued inside the hangar and lasted for hours. Many were kicked or struck with implements such as iron rods and rifle butts. That evening, the JNA troops who had been guarding the prisoners were withdrawn, leaving the prisoners to the mercy of members of the territorial defense, here and after TOs and paramilitaries. The trial chamber found that following the withdrawal of the 80th Motorized Brigade, TOs and paramilitaries murdered almost 200 of these individuals at Ofchara and buried them in a mass grave. These are identified in the schedule to the trial judgment. During the time relevant to the indictment, 
Mila Merkšić was a colonel in the JNA and commander of the Guards Motorized Brigade and Operation Group South, here and after OG South. As commander of OG South, he had command of all Serb forces, including JNA, TO, and paramilitary forces. Mr. Merkšić was convicted under Articles 3 and 7.1 of the Statute 4, murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war, for having aided and abetted the murder of 194 individuals, identified in the schedule to the trial judgment, at a site located near the hangar at Ovchara on 20 and 21 November 1991. Torture as a violation of the laws or customs of war for having aided and abetted the torture of POWs at the hangar at Ovchara on 20 November 1991. And cruel treatment as a violation of the laws or customs of war for having aided and abetted the maintenance of inhumane conditions of detention at the hangar at Ovchara on 20 November 1991. He was acquitted of all crimes charged as crimes against humanity, which included persecutions, extermination, murder, torture, and inhumane acts. The trial chamber sentenced him to a single term of 20 years imprisonment. During the period relevant to the indictment, Veselin Slivanchanin was a major in the JNA and held the post of head of the security organ of both the Guards Motorized Brigade and the OG South. The trial chamber found that Mr. Slivanchanin was appointed by Mr. Merksic to evacuate the Bukovar Hospital. It found that his responsibilities included the, contact of the conduct of the triage, the selection of war crime suspects removed from the Bukovar Hospital on 20 November 1991, and the latter's transport and security, as well as the evacuation of civilians. The trial chamber convicted him under Articles 3 and 7 of the statute for having aided and abetted the torture of prisoners of war at the hangar at Ovchara on 20 November 1991. It did not enter a conviction for cruel treatment as a violation of the laws and customs of war, as it was impermissibly cumulative with his conviction for torture. Further, it acquitted him of all counts charged as crimes against humanity, as well as for murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war. The trial chamber sentenced him to a single term of five years imprisonment. Following the practice of the International Tribunal, I will not read out the text of the judgment except for the disposition. Instead, I will summarize the issues on appeal and the findings of the appeals chamber. This summary is not part of the written judgment, which is the only authoritative account of the appeals chamber's rulings and reasons. Copies of the written judgment will be made available to the parties at the conclusion of this hearing. The Office of the Prosecutor, here and after prosecution, brought four grounds of appeal against the trial judgment and requests the appeal chamber to reverse the acquittals of Veselin Slivanchanin and Mila Merksic under Article 5 of the Statute on Crimes Against Humanity, overturn the acquittal of Veselin Slivanchanin for murder as a violation of the laws and customs of war, revise and increase Veselin Slivanchanin and Mila Merksic sentences in order to properly reflect the gravity of their criminal conduct, and lastly, revise and increase Veselin Slivanchanin's and Mila Merksic sentences in case the appeals chamber enters new convictions under Article 5 of the statute. Mr. Merksic brought 11 grounds of appeal against the trial judgment. He requests the appeals chamber <coughs> to acquit him of his convictions under Article 3 of the statute for having aided and abetted the crimes of murder, torture, and cruel treatment. He further argues that the trial chamber erred in sentencing him to 20 years imprisonment. 
Mr. Slivanchenin brought six grounds of appeal against the trial judgment. He requests the appeal chamber to reverse the trial judgment and find him not guilty of aiding and abetting torture as a violation of the laws and customs of war under Article 3 of the statute, or in the alternative, to order a new trial on this count, or, if the conviction is upheld, to reduce the sentence of five years' imprisonment imposed by the trial chamber. The appeals chamber heard submissions of the parties regarding these appeals on 21 and 23 January 2009. Before addressing Mr. Merksic and Mr. Slivanchin's appeal, I will touch upon the prosecution's first ground of appeal as it raises a legal issue which is relevant to both of them. In its first ground of appeal, the prosecution argues that the trial chamber erred in law by requiring the individual victims of crimes against humanity under Article 5 of the statute to be civilians, thereby excluding persons hors de combat, and as a result erred in entering convictions for war crimes only. The appeals chamber finds that whereas the civilian status of the victims, the number of civilians, and the proportion of civilians within a civilian population are factors relevant to the determination of whether the chapeau requirements of Article 5 of the statute that an attack be directed against a civilian population have been fulfilled, there is no requirement, nor is it an element of crimes against humanity, that the victims of the underlying crimes be civilians. <coughs> Therefore, the Appeals Chamber allows the prosecution's first ground of appeal insofar as it argues that the trial chamber erred in law in finding that for the purposes of Article 5 of the statute, the victims of crimes against humanity must be civilians, thus excluding persons or de combat from being victims of crimes against humanity. Even though the trial chamber erred in law by adding a requirement that the victims of the underlying crimes under Article 5 of the statute be civilians, the appeals chamber concurs with the trial chamber, albeit for different reasons, that the jurisdiction prerequisites of Article 5 of the statute, statute have not been established. This is so because, in the present case, the perpetrators of the crimes committed against the prisoners of Ofchara acted in the understanding that their acts were directed against members of the Croatian Armed Forces.